Go. Good morning, 10th, 11th grade. Uh, this is day number five on our, uh, our new journey. I hope everybody's getting uh, their homework done. Be sure when you get your homework, uh, some students have not turned that in. If you don't turn your homework in, I just want to remind you that that's a zero homework grade. So be sure to take your picture of your homework, send that in to me, so this way you can get credit for it. Also, be sure your handbooks are done as well, okay? So I uh, want to say congratulations to Preston Kluska today. Preston Kluska got our trivia question. The trivia question was, the correct answer uh, was a central angle. And so he gets five points on today's quiz. Great job, Preston, on that. And uh, stay tuned. You never know when we may have a special guest uh, to give us our trivia question. So I uh, hope you're paying attention and hope you're watching all the videos through. All right. So we're going to pray. We're going to get started. We're going to review our homework last night. Last night we had to do page number uh, 27 and 28. Do the even numbers. We'll go over them on the board. And then we'll prepare uh, for our checkup. If you have any questions for your quiz, we'll get we'll uh, try to address any of those questions going forward. And then we're going to jump to the next section. All right. So let's pray, and then we'll get started. Lord, thank you for this morning. Thank you for uh, all that you've done. Continue to protect us, our families, our churches. Give us wisdom now as we begin our geometry class. Give me, teacher, wisdom, alertness, utterance to explain these principles and these truths, the students to work hard to do their part, and we'll give you the glory and the honor in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to pick up just quick by way of review. Theorem 97, Theorem 98, we're talking about the 30-60 right triangle theorem as well as the isosceles right triangle theorem. So on page 24, would you turn back with me? Uh, the Theorem 96. Theorem 96, everyone turn back. Uh, good again, this is good to, to, to see all you this morning. Uh, we're going to read Theorem 96 together. Uh, theorem 96 says, if the acute angles of a right triangle have a measure of 30 and 60 degrees, then the hypotenuse is twice as long as the shorter leg. So the hypotenuse, what letter always represents the hypotenuse? How about we have Gianna? What letter represents the hypotenuse? How about we have Joey follow up? C, good. So uh, for the 30, I'm going to just put it down in this corner here so we have an idea. So the 30, 60 right triangle so C equals okay so the hypotenuse is twice as long as the shorter leg so we're gonna go and that's that's key it's got to be the shorter leg so we're gonna go C uh, equals two times a and then the longer leg is the square root of three times the length of the shorter leg so the longer leg is the square root of three times the length of the shorter leg. So that, that we want to, that we're going to apply that to our homework that we had to do last night. And then we had the isosceles right triangle theorem as well. And so let's turn our books to uh, page number 25. That's theorem 97. Both of these are highlights. You need to make sure that you memorize these formulas. In an isosceles right triangle, now since it's an isosceles right triangle, we know that the legs, two legs, are the same length. So we don't need to figure out uh, the extra step of finding a third of the, the second leg. So the hypotenuse is the square root of two times the length of either leg. So the hypotenuse is, all, again, letter represented there, uh, C, and it's going to be two times the length of the leg, okay? So we're going to use those two formulas. Hopefully you did your homework. I, again, have not received any, some of your homework. That needs to be turned in. If it's not turned in, it's an automatic zero. So be sure you, you get on that, all right? Now, last night for homework, we had to do page 27, 28, the even numbers. And you can see up here on the board, we have number two, number four, number six. And then actually, this is number eight. You did not have to do that one. Uh, we're going to do this extra one just for added practice, okay? So let's look at number two. So turn your books to page number 27. All right, good to see everybody. Liam, uh, good morning. Josh, Katie, Baruch, Katie Strzelecki, uh, and all my class, Joey, uh, Bobby. Hope everyone's doing well. Turn there. Look at number two here. The altitude, GH, of equilateral triangle EFG. So here's the altitude, okay, GH of triangle uh, EGF bisects angle EGF, so this is a bisector here, and then it goes on to say, how long is GH if EG is 10? 
Now, there's a clue in this one. What kind of triangle do we have? How about we have Josh Baruch? What kind of triangle? Read number two again for me. And then Caleb, you follow up. Caleb Tomlinson, good morning. Okay, good. So we have an equilateral triangle. How about we have Emmy? How's it going, Em? How about you follow up? What is in def the definition of an equilateral triangle, Em? Good. Gabe, follow up. Excellent. It is a triangle with three congruent sides. Okay, good. So if we have a triangle here, so let's go continue reading here. It bisects, the altitude bisects the angle EGF. How long is GH if EG is 10? So here's EG. Based on the definition of a right triangle, or equal, excuse me, equilateral triangle, GF would be what measurement? 10, good. And how about EF? It would be 10, good. It's an equilateral triangle. Now, here's the question, okay? We have how long is line segment GH if EG is 10? So, okay, we have a bisector here. And so, does anyone know the measures of the angles of an equilateral triangle? Well, remember, an equilateral triangle is also what, Hannah? Equilateral triangle is also an equiangular. Very good. So, uh, three congruent angles in a triangle would be what? How about we have Katie Baruch? How many degrees are in a triangle? 180. 180. Good. So, that makes each angle 60 degrees. All right, I'm getting somewhere. Now, follow with me here. If this is 60 and then we bisect it, Liam... Each angle would be, come on, Liam. How about Preston follow up? Each angle would be, remember, what does a bisector do? It divides an angle into two congruent parts, so this would be 30 degrees. Now, what is the length of EG? Okay, so we're looking for EG here, or excuse me, I'm sorry. What is the length of GH? Okay, which theorem do I use? Theorem 97, theorem 98. Do I use the 30-60 right triangle theorem or the isosceles right triangle theorem? Based on the uh, angles we have, very good. We use the 30-60 right triangle theorem. Now, if this is the right angle, this is the hypotenuse, which is letter C. And then we have the shorter side. And then we have our longer side. So, based on... Okay, let's look up here on the board here. All right, so C equals 2 times A. C equals 2 times A. Now, we already, we, we, we already, we don't need C. We already have C. So all I need here is the second leg. So how do I find the length of the longer leg? So B, all right, I'm going to put, okay, now, do we know what th this, this leg is here? Remember, this is a bisector here. This is 10. This would become 5. Now, let's use that. So, B equals A times the square root of 3. So, A times the square root of 3 would be 5 times the square root of 3. Now, what do the directions say? Again, very important, round off answers to two decimal places, so we don't want to leave our answers in radical form. So we find the square root of 3. Give you a second there. Take your calculator out. Find the square root of 3, then times that by 5. And what do we have for an answer? How about we have Giada. Good morning, G. How, how, how are you holding up with your brothers being quarantined with your brothers? I can see your hair is everywhere. It's been one of those days. I get it. Uh, G, what's the answer? Get your calculator out. Excellent. 8.66. That is the length of the longer side. And this is how we apply the 3060 and the isosceles right triangle. All right, let's look at number four you had to do for homework. A basketball player, seven meters from the center of the basketball court, shoots the ball into the basket at an angle measuring 30 degrees. Here's the question. How far is he from the basket? How far is he from the basket? So now, 
30 degrees. That would make this angle here, if this is the right angle, that would make this angle 60. So, which theorem are we going to use? The 30-60 right triangle theorem. Very good. So, uh, let's quickly get here. Now, remember, if this is the right triangle, okay, this length is the opposite of the right angle. So, what do we call the line segment that's opposite the longest angle? Okay, how about we have Dave Weber. Nice of you to join us today, Dave. Uh, still waiting for your homework and your checkup. I have not received either one. That very important that you get that to me as soon as possible. So, Dave, what do we have here? Uh, what is this called? This is the opposite of the right angle. This is called the... All right, how about we have Gabriel followed up? Good. Brandon. Good. This is called the hypotenuse, and the hypotenuse is always represented by the letter C. So how do I find the hypotenuse in the 30-60 right triangle theorem? So we're going to go C equals 2 times the length of the shorter side. So 2 times 7. So the square root of, I mean, excuse me, C times 2 times 7 is 14 meters. How far is the man from the basket, class? 14 meters. Number 4, 14. Okay, let's move to number 6. Again, this was homework. Hopefully everybody had it done here. A surveyor is along a riverbank. So here's our Here's our surveyor here. He's along a riverbank and uh, goes on to say 50 meters from C. Okay, I think I have my triangle messed up here. This should be B. This should be C. Okay, that's 50 meters from C. What is the distance across the river from C if BC is perpendicular to CA and the angle of the instrument pointing toward B measures 30 degrees, okay? How far? So again, what are we looking for? How far is he from across the river from that point there? So we don't know, again, if this is the right triangle, this is the right angle, what does that make this class? All right, Brandon, again, what do, you, what do we have here? Then Preston, you followed up. This is the hypotenuse, which is represented by the letter C. So how do I find, in the 30-60 right triangle, how do I find hypotenuse? Good. C equals 2A. Okay. Now, so C equals 2 times what? Ooh. Good point, Joe. That's a great job here. Well, we got to find the length of the shorter leg. We have the longer leg, but we have to find the length of the shorter leg. So we have first have to find B. All right, here's my eraser, looking all over for it. So let's find B, okay? So in the 30, 60 right triangle, B equals A to the square root of three. Okay, so, all right, B equals, all right, we know that's 50. We don't know the shortest leg, remember, so that's what we have to find before we can find the hypotenuse here. So 50 equals a to the square root of 3. Okay. How do I get a by itself, class? All right, quickly, come on, let's go, let's pay attention, everybody. How do I get letter a by itself? I get to divide both sides by the square root of 3. Very good. Okay, so I'm just going to make some room here. We're going to Erase this. So we have A equals 50 to the square root of 3. Now, Katie Strzlaki. Hey, Kate. Good morning. What's wrong with this fraction? All right. How about we have Liam? Follow up. Liam, what's wrong with this fraction? I cannot have a radical sign. Excellent. Cannot have a radical sign in the denominator. How do I remove it? we got to multiply the numerator and the denominator by the radical there. Very good. So we have A equals 50 to the square root of 3 over, what's 3 times 3, class? 9, the square root of 9. And what is the square root of 9? 3. 3. That's the answer. That's A. That's A. 
Now, how do I find the answer here? Remember, we can't leave radical. We want to leave our answers in uh, two, two decimal places. So here's how we'll do this, class. You're first going to find out what is the square root of 3 times that by 50, divided by 3, and you should get A equals 28.87 meters. 28.87 meters. All right, quickly, if I want to find what C is, what's C? In the 36 degree triangle, how do I find C? So C equals 2 times A. And it would simply be 2 times 28.87, and that would get you the answer for the hypotenuse. All right, any questions there? Okay, uh, if you have any questions, make sure you text me on the Remind app if you like. Number eight, let's quick, quickly get to number eight here on page number 29. All right, number eight. Let's erase this here. Okay, number eight states, in triangle XYZ, the measure of angle Y is 30 degrees. Find the length of altitude ZW if WY is 15. Find the measure of ZW if WY equals 15. Again, okay, again, what are we looking for? This is the hypotenuse, okay? This is the longest leg, that's the shortest leg. Class, what, what theorem are we using? The 30-60 right triangle theorem. Excellent. So, again, if I wanted to find C, it would be 2 times A. But I really want to find A. So, we're going to go B equals A times the square root of 3. We know what B is, so let's plug B in. Okay? So, 15 equals A to the square root of 3. How do we get A by itself? We've got to divide both sides by the square root of 3. Excellent. All right, so A equals 15 to the square root of 3. Emily, white. What's wrong with that fraction, Emily? Good. You cannot have a square root sign. How do I get rid of it, M? How about we have Hannah follow up? Good. We multiply both sides by the, the radical and the denominator. All right, Fausto, it's your turn. Fausto, what do I need to do here? Okay, we multiply 15 to the square root of 3 over. 3 times 3 is, Fausto, your turn still. 9, and what is the square root of 9, Fausto? 3, good. Now, here's what you need to pay attention to. You may find this on your checkup. You may find this on your test. This fraction must be reduced. These whole numbers can be reduced. And so 3 goes into 3 once, 3 goes into 15 three times. So my final answer is 3 to the square root of 3. Can't leave a radical, so how do I simplify? Find the square root of 3 times 3. The square root of 3 times 3 is 8.3. Six, six. All right. There's your homework for uh, last night. So make sure you make any corrections that need to be corrected. Now I'd like to go to page number 29 and 30. You're going to do this quiz today, and uh, so take some time. Take about 15 minutes from your class, and I want you to take this quiz. Uh, what I want you to do is the even numbers. We're going to quickly do the odd numbers. And then for homework tonight, you're going to do the evens. You're going to take a picture of them and send that to me, and I will score that, and I will get back to you, okay? So let's quickly review. We'll just do a couple each section, all right? <clears throat> Use the Pythagorean theorem. Find the unknown, lengths, the unknown length of the sides of these right triangle, okay? So here's our right triangle. You'll see this in your first section here. Again, it's a very important that you read your directions, the direction state. Leave radicals in simplest form. Leave radicals in simplest form. So quickly, number one, all right? We'll just do a couple here. Uh, letter A is four, B is nine. What is C? What's the Pythagorean theorem, class? Very good. C squared equals A squared plus B squared. So let's solve. All right, we're going to plug and chug here. And so we're going to go C squared is equal to 4 squared plus 9 squared. 
Okay, so we have c squared is equal to 16 plus 81. All right, so 16 plus 81 is 97. Okay, can't ha have a, gotta get c by itself. We're gonna remove that exponent. So c equals the square root of 97, the square root of 97. And that can't be simplified any further. And so for number one, it's the square root of 97. Let's do one more in this section here. Let's do number three, number three, okay? So number three, All right, we have a equals four. We don't know what b is, and c equals nine. Now remember, all we're doing, we leave the 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 the, uh, the equation the same. We're just plugging the numbers in. We're taking our knowns. So we know c. So that's going to be nine squared is equal to four squared plus b squared. That's all I did was just simply plug the numbers in, and just now we're going to solve. So nine squared is eighty one. 4 squared is, watch out, 16 plus b squared. Now, Katie Baruch, how do I get b squared by itself? What do I need to do? Good, need to subtract 16 from both sides. b squared equals 65. b squared equals 65. Now, once we do that, we want to just simply, all right, Okay, remove the exponent there. So b equals the square root of 65. That can't be simplified anymore. You want to leave that in its simplest form. Any questions with that? Good. Let's look at number nine. The directions say write yes or no to indicate if the triangle is a right triangle. Show the equation of inequality or, or inequality to verify your answer. Now remember, this is the converse of the Pythagorean theorem. And so if we substitute this in the Pythagorean theorem, and both sides of the equation are equal, then we know we have a right triangle. So let's look at number nine. Okay, I'm just gonna simply plug and chunk here, okay? So if the right side is equal to the left side. So we have six squared, does that equal four squared plus five squared, all right? So 36, we have 16 plus 25. All right, what's 16 plus 25, class? We have, what is it? Good. 51. What's the matter? Ah, good. Caught you sleeping. Caught you sleeping. What do we have here? It's 25 plus 16 is... 41! Ah, oh, caught you sleep. You're all like, yeah, this is it. That's it, Pastor Tom. It's 41 is the correct answer. Now, oh, something wrong? What are we doing? What are we doing here? Okay, so do these equal? Do those equal? No, they don't. So, right triangle or not? Good. So you, what you would put in the blank is 36 does not equal uh, 41. And then what you would do there is, oh, wait a second. Are you still nodding? Yes? Oh, you guys, I'm telling you, I don't know what I'm going to do with you guys. All right, first of all, for number nine, are we all doing number nine together? No, nah, apparently not. All right, so number nine. Here we go. I'm waiting for you guys. They're all falling asleep on me. B equals eight, C equals nine. There's the issue. We didn't write the proper number in. So please pay attention. Please pay attention. Stop cuddling in your sofa, under your blankets. Wake up and smell the roses here. So nine squared equals four squared plus 8 squared, 81 equals 16 plus 64. 81 equals, what's 16 plus 64? 80. Still not a right triangle though. Very good, not a right triangle. Let's do one more. Let's do number 11. 
number 11. All right, and then we'll, we'll move on here. Okay, number 11. Number 11 states, let's make sure we write down the proper numbers here. 16 and 20, okay? Let's plug and chug here. Uh, 20 squared equals 12 squared plus 16 squared. 20 squared class is 400, excellent. And then we have uh, 12 squared is 144 plus 16 squared is 256. Up, oh, it doesn't equal. Right? All right, good job. Wait a second. I caught you again. It's not the right answer. Don't ever take my word for it. Do the whack. Stop being so lazy. That's incorrect, class. 144 plus 256 is 400. It is a right triangle. Stop snoozing. Wake up. Let's go. Pay attention. All right, let's get ready to finish here. We're going to do, just do a couple on page 30, just to make sure everyone understands what you're doing. This is the application of the 30-60 right triangle and the isosceles, okay? So let's look at number 15 here. Number 15, okay? All right, right triangle here, 30, 60, C, B, A. All right? Now, does anyone remember the formulas? Remember, there's no looking back once we start this quiz. So for 3060, we have C equals 2A and B equals A to the square root of 3. Okay, now, number 15. If A equals 4, what is B and what is C? Okay, so if A equals 4, so C would be 2 times 4. So C would be 8. Good. And then B would be 4 to the square root of 3. That's simple, the 30-60 right triangle uh, theorem. Let's look at number 17. We'll do one more here, and then we'll, we'll move on. Okay, number 17. Uh, we have, we don't know what A is. We have B equals 12 to the square root of 3. And we don't know what C is. Okay. Again, all right, how do I find A? So, all right, so uh, B equals A to the times the square root of 3. So if I already know what B is, I'm just going to simply plug and chug. So we're going to go 12 to the square root of 3 equals A times the square root of 3. We want to get letter A by itself, so class, make sure you write your work, this work down, so uh, this way you're able to study and practice following these steps, okay? We divide both sides by the square root of 3, so I'm just going to simply reverse this. A equals 12 to the square root of 3 over the square root of 3. Remember, cannot have a radical in the denominator, so we're going to go multiply the numerator and denominator by the radical in the denominator. So what we have here is 12 times the square root of 9 over the square root of 9. Okay? This is a, look, look at this one here. What's the square root of 9 class? Is that a perfect square? How about we have Hannah? Is that a perfect square? Yes, it is. So 12 times 3 over 3. We can simplify. 12 times 3 is 36 over 3. And then we can reduce that to 12. Make sure you copy that work down. This way you have that uh, with you. And then let's do last one, number 23, the isosceles right triangle. Making sure we understand how to do, apply these right triangles. All right, so uh, we're going to go here. Isosceles triangle theorem, we have, this is 45, this is 45 degrees, we have A, B, C. 
All right, let's do number 23 and we'll wrap up for this morning. All right, we have here if A equals 3, B equals 3, what is C? Does anyone remember what the formula is for the isosceles right triangle theorem? Okay, we have, what is it? Good, we want to make sure that we, that we get that. So the answer is, all right, B equals A times the square root of two. Okay, um, wait a second, is that right? the hypotenuse is equal to a times the square root of 2. All right, so um, that, oh, wait a second. My spider senses are tingling. Is that correct? Is there something wrong with that one as well? There is something wrong with that one. We have, all right, the hypotenuse simply is c times, oh, it is right. Ah, come on, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to get you today. All right, so simply we're going to plug and chug here. So 3 to the square root of 2, and that is your hypotenuse. All right, so with that being said, uh, do your quiz tonight for homework. Um, you want to make sure that you're going to do the evens. Do all the evens. I want a picture of your homework. Uh, your also, your handbooks need to be up to date up to this point. Uh, take a picture of that as well. Make sure you send me that so it makes nice and clear so I can read that. And then by the end of this evening, your checkups need to be in. By the end of tonight, your checkups need to be in. Preston, you get five-point bonus. Congratulations. Hopefully you have a blessed day. I will see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.